Good morning, y'all. So, Gigi and I are headed to the gym. Um, <laughs> I'm tired. Ask me if I am a morning or evening workout person. I am a morning workout person. Typically like to get it done before work. Um, the only thing is when I go with Gigi, first thing in the morning like this, we're usually rushing because he usually gets work, gets needs to get ready for work earlier than I, I do. I've been trying to make my workouts a little bit shorter, four to five minutes to an hour. Um, so that's kind of new to me that I'm trying to figure out because I don't like rushing through my sets and stuff. So um, I'm just grabbing a applesauce pouch for like while I'm working out and then I'm gonna have this while I drive. But I have to stay afloat It's not easy Be a person you don't want Can somebody Save me of the thing Going to do Going to do Where is the life I Where's my shy Is this called living I don't know goodness who's my sweet guy hi babas look at his tail <laughs> hi babas i love you bubby My biggest tip is that beans contain a lot of protein and sometimes beans are things that you wouldn't really...
Someone else really likes fried eggs. Hi, Bubba's. I would bring you along with me with um, just a day working from home. As you can see, this is my super glamorous office now. Um, <laughs> you know, this is uh, this is my new normal, which is wonderful and different. So, um, luckily, one one thing that's really funny is whenever I have like Teams meetings with my video on, I'll have like the blur background or like another type of background behind me so you can't see this but this really fluorescent bear loves to just somehow or another the camera just picks him up so like if I'll move my head a tiny bit you'll see like this just orange bear <laughs> sticking out in this background last I saw you guys you know I was going to try to vlog a bit more during my work trip but unfortunately that just didn't end up happening I actually felt pretty like I felt fine when I went out there and then that night I felt like kind of bad I was so worried that like I had COVID or something like that so I took a COVID test and I waited it out that night took a COVID test it was negative I think it was just like I had not been feeling great during the weekend I think I had gotten maybe like a little bit of food poisoning over the weekend um, and I think my body was just to like processing that so and I say that because like um, where I had eaten, I gave Brutus a little bit of it too and he also had the runs. Um, I wasn't having the runs per se, but anyways, my tummy just was feeling super nauseous and I took a pregnancy test, I'm not pregnant. Luckily, I felt better the next morning, so I was able to go to work and things like that and I'm, I'm not sick or anything like that. I really think it was just like food poisoning um, and just kind of like getting over that. So anyways, all that to say this last week, I didn't even really work out. I just like wanted my body to just rest and recuperate from whatever I was trying to fight off. I also brought Brutus's bed in here. He needs to manage me. What? <laughs> Bubs! Oh my heaven, did you hear him? And then here's my work bag. I've had this um, for like four or so months. Dagny land in large carry-all as you can see here um, I like it because my work laptop is really big so it actually fits in like the laptop sleeve of this one versus the other one that I have I have had it's too long so it wouldn't fit in there but anyways oh my gosh my hands feel so dry I'm trying to be better this week to hit like my protein goals I may work out consistently but I'm not great at maintaining or just hitting certain nutrition goals so protein maybe even staying under a certain calorie count, whatever. I've just never really been great at that. So I'm going to try to do better, um, especially, you know, my wedding is gonna be next year. I want to like slowly lose weight in a sustainable way. Like I don't wanna do some just like crash diet or some like intense, you know, thing that's not gonna be sustainable for me, especially with all the other kind of stresses that I have in life, you know, like work and personal life, you know, not like 
you know, there's always something going on um, in life that, you know, I just, I just don't want trying to meet that kind of a goal to add extra pressure and extra stress on me because I already have plenty enough that I am trying to, you know, do better at just kind of juggling and managing. So, um, and I think that's one reason why I'm so like, I think especially after my divorce and after, you know, juicy passing, just, um, like for me, the thing that I most value is time, quality time. Um, and so I'm so particular about where I spend that time now um, that I will not allow my time being taken for granted, being used um, in unproductive things or around toxic people. Like I'm just not going to do that anymore. And if that means limiting access or putting boundaries in places with certain people or certain activities or whatever the case may be, then that's what I'm going to do. Because for me, like my peace is so important now in this season of life. Um, and it wasn't like this for, you know, basically the majority of my life. It's only been this way where I've really um, kind of like had that epiphany, kind of stopped putting everyone else's needs and comfort and things ahead of myself, which isn't to say that I'm trying to go all the way to the other spectrum of being a selfish person, but Anyways, <laughs> so there's a lot going on, y'all. Um, a, a lot of growth that has happened, but at the same time, like it has led to just a, for me, a more peaceful existence because there are certain things that obviously I don't have control over and those things may not be super peaceful, but what I can control, that is something that is really important for me. And I am, one thing that I love about you know, Gigi is that we are very similar in that way. We just share those types of values and that's really important to me to have in a partner because like he's the one that I'm with, you know, 90% of the time. <laughs> it's nice to have someone who is aligned in that kind of a way. So anyways, all right, I'm, I'm kind of going off into several different topics, but on the agenda today, we are approaching Christmas. So obviously it's like the time to squeeze every last bit of everything in while we can before you know time off schedules and things but at the same time i have to keep reminding myself and my team that we are not saving the world not with certain certain things that we can do off our list but everything that is outside of our control like just do the best you can have a good chunk of focus time this morning and then i have back-to-back -back meetings here in probably another like hour and a half so um Take with me. One thing that I had to do, I had to get a smaller desk since this room, you know, obviously has limited space. This one I got from Amazon. I obviously like the coloring and stuff like that, but it was perfect just sizing wise for like my computer, my uh, monitor and stuff like that. And I love that it is stand up as well. Come on, friend. And it's not too, too expensive. So I'll share it with you guys if you have limited space like me. That would be the typical procedure for an inventory count, for a physical inventory count, as well as because of the receiving issue that we identified. That would be another reason for needing to perform that count to that level of detail. So we can't, from a controls perspective, you know, the vendor sending it to us and having their information on the bill of lading is, is great from an operational perspective. But us as management, we can't unfortunately say that, hey, the vendor sent it to us, so we're gonna rely that what they've sent to us is accurate. So those two things coupled together is part of the reason why we do this this level of a physical count at year end. Um, and definitely understand, I know that there's a lot of complexity and nuances to obviously the business. We're looking at it again from an audit perspective, trying to get the financials right and in compliance with controls purposes. Almost one o'clock now. I'm finally finished with some of my meetings and I'm going to have some lunch. So let me show you guys. I went to HEB recently. Gigi grilled up some of the chicken that I bought from there. 
I'm gonna throw this in the microwave. Have a comal, not really, but I'm gonna heat up some tortillas and make a little taco. And someone is coming over here to investigate. Are you a little audit puppy? You're investigating? Are you investigator? They have usually butter tortillas and they didn't have any and I didn't want to wait around for it. So I got regular flour tortillas. I'll just have to live with it. You need to have a nice warmed up flour tortilla. This is really hard to do with one hand. Okay. First bite. Right, no, for sure. Yeah, I I'd be happy to do that. I, I, you know, I probably would have reached out to her myself too, um, but I wanted to respect, you know, boundaries and stuff. Yeah, you can, um, I have my, my pen ready, so if you want to just give me her number, yeah, if you don't mind. Alrighty, well, I will, I'll, I'll call her right now, um, and then I'll just, like, shoot you a text or an email and let you know just how, how it went or if I got her voicemail. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Okay, sounds good. Bye. So I'm currently trying to hire a backfill for one of my manager positions. We, it's been a few months. Um, we've been looking, and at this point, it's more of a trying to find like the right person versus trying to just rush through it and find someone just to fill that position. I think we found someone um, who whose values seem to align and just seems like she'd just be an overall good team player and good fit for for the team. So um, we have extended like a verbal offer to her, but going through the process of actually getting the offer letter, like a written one, it's just, you know, there's, um, it, it's, it takes a little bit. It's not, um, especially with the holidays and things like that. So anyways, uh, that was her recruiter, you know, just chatting so I'm going to give her a call and um, just kind of you know reassure her that we want her and are excited to have her it's just you know getting the offer letter together and whatnot hey it's Steffi I just wanted to give you a quick call and give you a quick update on you know just your offer letter so uh, we are still in the process of just getting it formalized we are definitely super excited to have you as part of the team and looking forward to you starting so if you have any questions in the meantime please feel free to give me a call y'all so my work day is finally coming closer to an end not really it is four o'clock and I am finally done with meetings and calls so now I'm going to try for the next couple of hours to have some focus time just get some deliverables ready for our external auditors um, so I am in the mood for something delicious I'm choosing between a honey crisp apple or a Granny Smith apple. I love Granny Smith, but I think I'm more in the mood for a honey crisp. When I was in Florida, I went to one of my favorite restaurants called Dada. It's in Delray Beach, and uh, it's kind of like it's described as an eclectic um, restaurant. Where are you? Fruit wash? Come on. I don't know what was going on, y'all. That's why I thought I was pregnant. <laughs> Honestly, because like I love Dada's crab cakes, but it made me so nauseous just eating it. But then like I had just a piece of apple and it was like the best tasting thing ever. So anyways, I just think it was the food poisoning. Anyways, I'm going to make this. So I went to the grocery store this weekend, loaded up on just like good snacks and good food so that I could have here at the house. One thing I've been wanting to talk to you guys about coming out of a divorce and stuff obviously if you've been part of my journey for a bit you know I was definitely growing afterwards learning from it and things like that one thing that I came to realize is that you know part of the reason why I chose the kind of partner I had before was 
kind of informed by what how I was the kind of, not how I was raised, but the experiences I went through as a child. Um, not to say that is good or bad. Well, definitely not ideal. Like I wouldn't want to repeat my childhood on um, my children. So that was super important for me in this season of life was finding someone who, you know, would be a good partner for my, for me and a good parent figure for my future children. The standard I was holding people to if I was dating, assessing if, you know, I would be proud to have that person as the father figure of my kids. You know, that's kind of a tangent, but the main thing is, you know, there are definitely things that I realized I needed to unlearn from childhood, from that previous relationship. Um, and one of those things included my relationship to money, which I know is kind of hard, not the greatest thing to talk about, um, but I had to unlearn habits and I'm still unlearning certain habits when it comes to money, budgeting, finances. One of those things is truly working and living on a real budget where it's not like feeling like it's not in, in a way of being like, oh, I can't have these things. It's more Okay, what do I, what are my financial goals and what do I need to do to reach those financial goals while still enjoying my life? I have been on this new journey um, with trying something different. So I'm using an app called You Need a Budget and it's more about like you allocate funds to certain categories and you use that to make spending decisions versus your bank account balance. And I love that idea because that's not how I have approach things in the past. It's not the most wonderful topics to talk about for someone like me who's like, you know, CPA and making a good income and all this other jazz, you know, you would think that someone like me has like a whole bunch of savings and a whole bunch of investments and all this other stuff. And that's not the case. I'm definitely rebuilding. Part of it had to do with how I interacted with money in the past. And also part of it has to do with like your partner and who you, their viewpoint and approach to money as well. Yeah, just anyways. Yeah. All that to say that my main financial goal is to get out of debt and then save up for a house and save for a retirement and invest and stuff like that. Those are my goals and I'll talk about them more in the future, I'm sure, but I just wanted to share because it's like, we're all human. We all are going through like a experience. Yeah, no one's life is perfect. So, you know, I've never wanted or tried to portray that my life was that way, but you know, there's obviously certain things that even now I still keep private. Life people should be able to have private things in their lives, but I feel like this is probably something that I want to share and be more open about because, you know, I'm sure I know I'm not the only one who's going through it where, you know, you've made some, maybe not the best decisions in your past, but you want to do something about it now. And that's what I'm doing. So, okay. Mmm, that's yummy. You can go work now. Get this to brew. I don't know why I'm sleeping on honey crisp apple. Mm. Hi, handsome. You want an apple? He loves strawberries, by the way. He doesn't like blueberries as much as he bought apple. You don't like apples? He said no.